SO40. Red spent the day with them a couple of weeks ago. Are we all looking forward to the party of the century? The body was found by someone from your nick, was it? PC Reg Hollis. He calls her up in the middle of the night because he's worried about her. Well, Reg Hollis is a bit of an oddball. The word that springs to my mind isn't oddball. It's suspect. Today. Any chance of getting this statement done? If it was anything to do with me, mate, you'd be at home by now. But this DCR, she's, um... Oh, she's making life difficult for you. Yeah. Mum, Reg was just wondering when we could get his witness statement done. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I'd like to fingerprint you and take your clothes for forensic examination first. Unless you've got any objections. No, no. You got anyone who could bring you in a spare set of clothes? Well, my stuff's at Tony Stamps. I'm all right like this. Well, you don't want to be walking about in a paper suit, do you? I'll give him a bell if you like. Oh, yeah, thanks. I did try and revive Mrs Tyner, so... I expect there'll be some of her blood on my clothes. It's going to help both of us if I can eliminate you from the inquiry as soon as possible. Hey. Do you know what a duck's favourite drug is? No, what? Quack cocaine. <laughs> like that, Rich. I just thought I'd check in and make sure you've got everything you need. Oh, yes, thank you, sir. You know the body was found by one of your PCs? Yes, Reg Hollis. But there's no question of him being a suspect. Are you asking me or telling me? Asking. I'm sure he had very good reasons for visiting Mrs. Tyler in the middle of the night. We haven't taken a statement yet. But you're not ruling him out. I'm three hours into an inquiry. I'm not about to rule anyone out. Well, good luck. And as I say, if there's anything you need. You'll be the first to know. Before we were going. Yeah, well, that was before the journey into the heart of darkness that is Reg Hollis's personal possessions. Give it a rest, you. What's that? That's a pack of three. I don't believe it. Reg Hollis has got a supply of sepals. Unopened. <laughs> Expiry date, 31st of the 12th, 98. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, we've got to go. Yeah, yeah I'm driving. Oh, this is going to get all round the neck. The three of us delivering clean cacks to Reg Hollis in the night. Well, they'd be more interested in Reg being in a frame for murder. But he's not, though, is he? Well, by the time the story gets round the neck, he will be. Rich, got the clothes you asked for. I noticed you cut out all the designer labels. No. It's just a joke, Rich. Or as near to one as I can get at two o'clock in the morning. Mm. I'll get an evidence bag and take the clothes you're wearing. Thanks, Mickey. Cheer up, mate. You'll be cleared up in no time. I just can't see it myself. Reg Ollis, axe murderer. It's a joke. Yeah. Well, you look at blokes who've been around a while. You. Me. Reg. It does get to you, right? So we end up bumping off old ladies? <laughs> no. 
It's just we've all done things in the past we're not too proud of, yeah? I've never seen him hit out. I've never even seen him lose his rag. So what if he bottles it all up? And all of a sudden, bang, it all goes off. Of course, Reg didn't do it. I'm just thinking out loud. How is he? Hard to say. Not his normal self, really. He's got some hope, then. Come on, I need to get some shower. We'll be back here again before we know it. You first went to see Mrs Tyler's flat three months ago. Since then, how many times in total would you say you visited the flat? Fifteen or... twenty times? That's quite a lot of visits, wouldn't you say? I mean, most people, they'd go two or three times, maybe. I don't know. I haven't bought a flat before. Did you have any other reason for visiting Mrs Tyler? Not especially, you know. We just got on well. I mean, you know, what with her husband having been in the police force and... It was just someone to talk to. You know how it is. Why did you have a key to the flat? Ah, oh, well, that was to make things easier, because... she had arthritis, you see, and it was difficult for her to get up and answer the door. Did she mention giving a key to anyone else? Yes, her daughter. Her daughter had a key. You mentioned this daughter to DC Webb. He was having trouble tracing her. Do you know her name? I think it was Anna or Maria. Um, I don't know about the surname. I don't think it was Tyler. She was married? No, adopted. But the daughter, Anna, she had traced Doreen. Did you meet her? No. I'd like to move on to yesterday. Could you tell me what you did? Well, I'm staying with a colleague, you see, at the moment, PC Tony Stamp. Uh, he's at this nick. He's a friend, really. I left his flat at about half nine, and uh, I got a bus, and then a tube, and went to St James's. I had an interview at New Scotland Yard. And what was that for? It's for a transfer to SO14. I left there at about 12 and went back to Tony's flat. How about the rest of the day? At about 2.30, I went out to see if I could find somewhere to rent before moving into Mrs Tyler's flat. I was supposed to see somewhere in Parkgate Lane at, uh, well, I can't remember when, but anyway, the point is, when I got there, there was nobody there, so I just went for a walk. Until when? Mm, until about 10. Then I went to Wales Avenue. I tried ringing Mrs Tyler again and didn't get any reply. I eventually went to her place at uh, about 10.30. You spent the best part of eight hours walking around? Well, yeah, I mean, not the afternoon, but after that. Could you flesh that out a bit? I went to a place called The Scales, a pub. I had a sandwich there at seven o'clock. And um, then I went for a walk on the common. There was a party at the section house. I understand you were involved in organising it, but you didn't go. Why was that? I wasn't in the mood. Well, I'd had a run-in with my colleagues here at the Nick about the party. I just didn't feel like going. Why did you go to see Doreen Tyler? Well, because, um, I promised her that I would. That I would tell her how the interview had gone. Now, she had a hospital appointment in the afternoon and then she had to be back at her flat for tea. So, uh, I didn't try calling her again until, um, about seven. But you didn't go to the flat until 10.30? Well, no, that's right. I kept trying to call her, and uh, when I didn't get a reply, I got worried. I thought she might have had a fall or something. Then I went round there. I could see that the lights were on in her flat and that the TV was flashing. Then I went up and let myself in, and, um... Well, that's when I found her. Reg, you know when you've got an old pillow and the stuffing's been pushed down one end? Yes. That's what your story's like. 
or the details are at one end. The rest of it's pretty uncomfortable. I get the impression you think that too. Let's see if we can get the stuffing, the specifics, a bit more evenly distributed. There's no rush. I've got to work today. I shouldn't worry about that. Duncan, did you get your early morning wake-up call from the DCI? You too. Uh, perfect way to start the day. Did he tell you Reg Hollis could be a suspect? Yeah, well, I've always thought that Reg was decidedly suspect. Of murder? No, no, no. I was thinking more of crimes involving farm animals. <laughs> the Chief Superintendent has asked me to serve you with a Regulation 9 notice, which means you're suspended from duty. If you could read and sign that, please. You're clear about the restrictions concerning entering police establishments and contacting other officers? Yes, sir. Your warrant card, please. Thank you. Sir, um, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but uh, I think given the circumstances, I would like to withdraw my application for the transfer to SO14. That would probably be for the best. And I thought you might see it like that, sir. Right, well, if that's all, I'll get someone to escort you from the station. Sure. Time to call this. Sorry about last night. No problem. All sorted now, is it? No, I've been suspended. What are you doing? I don't want to cause you any more aggravation by staying here. You what? You're a pain in a bump to live with. That's got nothing to do with your being suspended. Yeah, well, I think it would be better all round if I moved out. What's the problem? Told them where you were last night? Yeah. So, well, they check that out and then you're in the clear. I can't prove where I was. Well, what were you doing? Just needed time to think stuff over. Like what? Like this transfer. Whether I really want it or not. I thought you'd already uh, made up your mind about that. Yeah, well... It's not that easy. I sort of take in stock. Do you know, it suddenly occurred to me. I'm a 42-year-old man, I've got nowhere to live, I'm tired. And what can I do about it? Well, why didn't you speak to someone about it? The mood you were in last night, you weren't about to talk anything over. There are other people. Yeah, well, it doesn't really matter now. I mean, it's not much of an alibi. I can even see why there'd be a case against me. Reg, all they've got to do is ask someone who knows you. Oh, yeah. And what they're going to hear. I know what people say. I'm not stupid. Why has this got you so rattled? I mean, they've made a mistake, but they worked that out. Yeah, look, I know you're only trying to help, but... I can't really go through it all again now. Suit yourself. Well, where are you going to go? I'll let you know. You're not doing a runner, are you? No. And don't go putting that around. Oh, wait. Right. Look, um, I'll stay out of it if that's what you want, but, but if you need anything, you know where I am. OK. Tasks for today. DC Lennox will coordinate a door-to-door -door search in Wells Avenue for witnesses. Obviously, I'm interested in anyone seen entering Mrs. Tyler's flat during the course of yesterday evening, but I also want to know who were her friends, who visited her, who might have had access to her flat. Did we have a time of death yet? Around nine o'clock, that's what we're working on. Doreen Tyler had a hospital appointment yesterday. I need to know how she got to and from the hospital. Was it an ambulance or a minicab? Peter, will you assign that action? Any questions? 
As yet, we haven't managed to trace Mrs Tyler's daughter. We've made an initial search of the flat, but can't find any address or contact details for her. Danny, I'm assigning that to you. It's possible she doesn't know of her mother's death yet, so uh, a little discretion, OK? Mum. But if you find her, I want to know straight away. Apart from anything else, she's the next of kin. That should keep you busy for an hour or two. Thank you very much. Thank Mom. you, Mum. Is it true about Reg being suspended, then? Well, he's not here, is he? So what's going on, then, Desmond? Sounds like he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, but all these vicious, malicious rumours I keep hearing about Reggie the Terminator Hollis, will somebody tell me... Grow up, will you? Oh, well, pardon me for breathing. Oh, hello. Enjoy yourself last night, did you? Yeah, mind your own business. What is it with everyone this morning? Some of us had a late night. What, and I didn't? Well, there weren't too many people left at four in the morning when I had to pack up the sound system. Quiet down, please. Now, before we start, I want to say a couple of words about Reg. He's currently suspended from duty following his discovery of a sudden death last night. I realise that this is a shock for all of us, but for the next eight hours, I expect you to concentrate on your work. And that should leave you at least an hour before drinking up time in the Elka Arms tonight to gossip, speculate or whatever about Reg. Uh, Tony and Nick, can I see you after parade? I've just received the initial findings of the post-mortem. Mrs. Tyler was killed by a blow to the head with a blunt metal object, almost certainly the poker she kept by the fireplace. But that's what you expected, wasn't it? Yes. There's also a partial set of fingerprints on the handle. They belong to Reg Hollis. I see. But Reg does know about fingerprints. If he was the murderer, he would have done something about it, wouldn't he? That's quite an interesting assumption in that question. You can accept that Hollis might have killed an elderly woman in cold blood, but you can't believe that he would have left clues behind. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. No, sir. When I interviewed Hollis last night, I asked him about the poker. He couldn't remember ever having touched it. However, he could have moved the poker when he was trying to resuscitate Mrs Tyler. That's possible, but he didn't say that. Was there anything else, sir? No, thank you. Oh, there's a couple of specific jobs that Reg normally does that I need someone to cover. Has he told you about his security checks on sheltered housing blocks? No, not me. Reg is senior service. Yeah, I know about that. Well, it's just a question of making sure that the old people involved check up on one another. And obviously, Reg isn't available to do that. So do you want us to take that over? For the moment, you can pick up the details from the BIU. Sir, have you heard anything from the incident room? I've had other things to do. Duncan, Jen's got something to tell you. Well, that's a big dog. I'm DC Lennox from Sun Hill. Got some information for you. About last night? Yeah, terrible business. Known the lady for years. OK. Can I have your name, please? Now, Len Appleby. I live in Wells Avenue, number 32. OK, so what have you got to tell me? I was at home most of the evening, but I took the dog out around about nine. There was this bloke hanging around. I asked him what he was up to. He came up with some cock and bull story about how he was going to buy a flat round here. Can you describe him? Oh, he's not young, not old. He had this black, greasy hair, comb back. Sharp face, if you know what I mean. Nasty piece of work. Are you sure about the time? Yeah, I told you, nine o'clock. Half time in the football. All right. You said you knew Mrs Tyler. Have you ever been in the flat? Oh, yeah, I used to go in there and do odd jobs, you know, tap washers and that. So do you have a key for the place, or...? Well, I did have at one point, but I gave it back. All right. Thanks very much, Mr Appleby. We'll get in touch. Thank you. We 
much. You done? Trying to trace her next of kin. Miss Doreen Tyler murder. Ah, the one that Reg didn't do. Yeah. So what's the problem, mate? No name, no address, no date of birth. Doreen Tyler had her adopted in the 50s. That's all I've got to go on. Good luck. Mrs Tyler, her husband was in the job, is that right? Yeah, a bit retired years ago. Even before you joined Tony. No. No, Tony's been in the job so long he can remember running down Bow Street behind Robert Peel. You want to watch yourself, Nick? You're very rapidly becoming the new Reg Ollis. What? Worst jokes on the relief. But Reg doesn't just tell sad jokes. Reg is a sad joke, is he not? You know nothing about Reg. But and you do, do you? Well, I think I've worked with a bloke long enough. But all of a sudden, so if you work with a bloke for a long time, you've got girls, girls, please. Can you go and scratch each other's eyes out elsewhere? I've got some work to do here. I'm trying to get an idea of Reg Hollis's behaviour over the last few weeks. I wondered if you'd noticed anything out of the ordinary. No, can't say I have. Sergeant Ackland. Well, uh, I know he's been through a lot of changes, what with moving out of the section house and applying for a transfer. They say those are two of the most stressful things, don't they? Moving and changing jobs. That and bereavement. Yeah, well, he hasn't exactly had that, not unless you include last night. But his sister, and I think she's his only relative, she's just gone back to New Zealand. So, what with one thing and another, the last couple of months can't have been easy. Has this affected his work at all? Well, no, I'd say the opposite. He's been very reliable. Earlier in the week, his work led to the arrest of some armed robbers. Yes. Yes, that's true. No, there's been nothing obvious. How about this party last night? We didn't go. To be honest, I've never known him miss something like that. I know it sounds hard, but Reg doesn't have much of a social life outside work. Yeah, well, he's not exactly unique in that. Have there been any incidents at work? Rows with colleagues? Any signs of stress? Well, not rows. I mean, there was a bit of disagreement about the section house party, but, but nothing else. But can I ask you, is Reg seriously a suspect for this? Well, I can't ignore the evidence. Look, I've known the man for 15 years. I mean, I can't believe it. He's not a violent person. We all know people in the job who haven't been able to cope with stress. Yes. My experience is they don't ask for help. They don't even admit to themselves they've got a problem. Then something tips them over the edge and it's too late. Wait a minute. Are you saying Reg topped an old lady as a cry for help? No. I'm trying to find a way to make what you and other people have told me about him match up with what the evidence is suggesting. If you've got a better explanation, please tell me. Oh, yeah. That he didn't do it. That's possible, too. Look, thanks for your time. Oh, well done, June. You're supposed to be on Reggie's side. I am. I just said that he'd been under stress. Which she will take that he's off his trolley. What, and you think that she's going to be fooled by you standing there saying that there's nothing odd about Reg at all? She's going to be even more suspicious if she thinks that we're closing ranks. Fat chance of that round here. Afternoon, ladies. Ladies. What is it with Reg and old ladies, then? What's that supposed to mean? Well, why has he set up a scheme like this? It's like a pretty good idea to me, unless I've missed something. No, it is a good idea. It's just weird. I mean, I can just picture him smiling up to her. Well, so you think it's better to just leave them get on with their own security? I think something weird about that. We've got a witness. Places Reg Hollis in this street at 9 o'clock. He's sure it was Hollis? He gave me a pretty good description. I don't think there's much to it. OK. What was it you wanted me to see here? Mrs Tyler's passbook for an account at the Great Northern Building Society. It's been systematically emptied over the last couple of months and £200 in cash was withdrawn the day before yesterday. The Canley Road branch. Reg Hollis was on a parking clamp down there that same day. OK. If he did withdraw money, he'll show up on the security tape. Can you and Danny get hold of that from the Building Society? Mum. We'll interview Reg Hollis again. No, you will keep a lookout for any strangers about, yeah? I don't need you to tell me that. Sorry, didn't mean to teach my grandmother to suck eggs. I am not your grandmother. Where's that other one that comes round here? Oh, you mean PC Hollis? Yes, Rich. Where's Rich? I don't like him. He doesn't mind what he does, you know, snooping round my house without even asking. You see, he wasn't able to come today, madam. I like Rich. 
I don't trust him. You don't know what he's up to. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's saying. I think he's after my money. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't do anything like that. Anyway, I'll keep a good eye on him. I do. Right, well, thanks very much for seeing us. Um, we'll make sure someone comes in next week to check on you, yeah? Aren't you going to show us your viper? A what? Reggie's got a viper. That big stick for hitting burglars with. Oh, the asp. Reggie does a little show for me. He makes it spring out and then he twirls it around. That sounds like Reg. He does it for the ladies at the lunch club as well. It's his party piece. Are you going to show us? Yeah, yeah, of course. Go on, Nick. Right. Well, stay in your seats, ladies. <clears throat> no. You're not half as good as Reg. Right. Bye bye. Did you ever see a building society passbook belonging to Doreen Tyler? No. Did you ever withdraw any money from a building society for her? No, I never did that. When we interviewed you earlier, you told me that you didn't go to Mrs Tyler's flat in Wales Avenue until 10 o'clock. Are you certain about that? Yes. It, it was at 10 o'clock. Where were you at 9 o'clock? I was on the common. You definitely weren't in Wells Avenue. No. I was walking on the common. We have a witness who saw you near Mrs Tyler's flat at nine. How do you account for that? Well, I can't. But I did bump into a gentleman in Wells Avenue at about 10 o'clock. Let's move on. You made a number of visits to Mrs Tyler's flat. But I understand there was some question as to whether she was going to sell or not. Were you trying to persuade her? No. It was never like that. But you were determined to get it. Well, yes, but... I wasn't making her do anything she didn't want to do. No. You told one of your colleagues you felt you were meant to have the flat. Why was that? Well, it's going to sound stupid, but... Just a set of coincidences, really, you know, what with her husband having been in the job and me finding out her daughter had been adopted and I'd been adopted. I... You talked about that. How did you feel knowing that Doreen Tyler had given away her daughter for adoption? It's just something to talk about, that's all. Did it make you angry at all? That she'd given away her child in the same way that your natural mother had? No. Do you have a problem forming relationships with women? I don't see what that's got to do with any of this. I'm just trying to get a sense of why a relatively young man like you should spend so much time with a woman like Mrs Tyler. Well, she was alone. We liked talking. I was doing her a favour, that's all. You told me that her daughter also visited her. Well, yeah, that's right, she did. We've traced her daughter. Her adoptive parents changed her name to Anna Matthews. Sounds about right. But she won't have visited Mrs Tyler that often. She died in 1998. She can't have. She did. And I have a real problem here, Reg. This keeps happening. You tell us something, we check it out, and guess what? It's not true. Doesn't look too clever for him, with all this evidence stacking up. You think he did it? Of course not. But the DCI does. And I tell you what, she thinks she's looking at a quick result here. Yeah. There is one piece of good news. The scene examiner lifted prints from some of the drawers in the flat. And guess what? It's not Reg's. But it could be anyone's. When it comes down to it, Reg's prints were on the poker. That's what counts. If Reg had gone into the building society, surely Nick Klein would have seen him. He was with him. Yeah, but Reg didn't come back here for refs, so he could have had a clear run then. Well, has he turned up yet? Not yet. What are we doing here? You stay put. I won't be a minute. Yeah, but it's home here. No, didn't I hear something about Reg covering for you when you went waltzing off to the bank the other day? Well, you're returning a favour, all right?
Doreen gave it to me, for good luck. Do you know, I can't believe all this. It, I mean, it was only yesterday that she was as right as rain and all excited about me going to Royal Protection. It was like I was one of the family. Probably meant a lot to her, having you around. I know you're good with old people, Rich. I've seen that for myself today. Me and Nick Clyde, we've been visiting some of your old dears down at the sheltered housing. Oh, yeah? They told us a lot about you. One of them told us how you always showed her your viper. She meant your asp. That's a regular routine you do, is it? Yeah. I did that for Doreen. She showed me the old truncheon and I told her about the asp, only I used her poker. I should have thought. You lost me, mate. That's why my fingerprints were all over her poker. I couldn't work it out. Well, you're going to have to tell DCI Munson. She only said I've made it all up. Yeah, but if it's the truth... All right, I'll tell her. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Rich, I've had enough of this. You're going to really have to do something about getting yourself out of this almighty mess you're in. Like what? Well, you could move out of this hole for a start and back into my flat. No, I can't do that. Rich, look, I really want to help you, but I can't if you won't let me. There. Keys to the flat. Use it. Now, is there anything else I can do? I asked the Great Northern to go back through their transaction sheets. The withdrawal from Mrs Tyler's account was made at around 10.30. When Reg Hollis was on refs. But there's no sign of him on the tape. Maybe he's working with someone else. A woman using a passbook could cause less suspicion. For what it's worth, that doesn't sound like Reg. He works on his own as often as he can. Aye, but like you said, he's not on the tape. And neither is Mrs. Tyler. So who took that money out then? Tony, I hear Reg has moved back into your flat. Yes, sir. He has informed DCI Munson. And she's told me, uh, what's going on? He was staying at some poxy little hotel. There was no need for that. You know the conditions of his suspension? He hasn't been charged, sir. He's not facing any disciplinary action. That's not the point. No, sir. But if members of his own relief don't stick by him, then he's really in trouble. Yes. I was asked to pass on DCI Monson's concerns to you. She may well speak to Mr Chandler. Watch your back, OK? Sir, thank you. Reg, Tony, I've got your pocketbook. What is it you want? Uh, look, um... There's an index in there for a, a white escort. It belongs to a woman I saw outside Doreen. Uh, Elridge, yeah. Uh, Lima 155 Golf Hotel Victor. Yeah, that's the one, Tony. Look, can you please run a vehicle and a driver check on it for me? It's the only thing I can think of. Someone said you were looking for me. It's about Rich Hollis. <sighs> I can't help, Tony. I really can't help. No, oh, I'm Blagger. Humphreys. I hear you could be up for accommodation for that arrest. Yeah, maybe. So who was it who gave you and Danny Glaze the tip-off? I think you really owe Ridge one. <sighs> Come on. This has gone way beyond any favours. Have you seen the evidence that's stacking up against them? Yeah, I know. But Reg was really close to this old lady. And he's gutted by what happened to her. All I'm trying to do is summon it to help. What do you need? Reg reckoned he saw a car parked on Canley Road the day before yesterday, when he was doing that parking sweep. He's pretty sure he saw it again. A woman who came to see Doreen Tyler parked it outside her flat. Now, I've done an index check and I've got a name. Catherine Dell. What do you want me to do? Check it out. PNC, anything you can think of. It'd be better coming from you. OK. And then what? Well, who knows? Might even get yourself another commendation. <laughs> Sierra 1 from Sierra Oscar. Coates Common reports of an assault. Informant of Mrs Green. Can you deal? All received. On way.
them. Help us! All right. Right, it's Jane, isn't it? What's happened? Where right. do you think? Right, what's her name? Bastard! Get Michelle! Right, Michelle, can you hear me? Who did it? Him? Is he the pimp? I asked you a question. You think I want to wind up like that? Now ask her. What did you two with? That. Sierra Oscar from 140. Ambulance, please. Coats, common. Uh, one unconscious female. Face injuries. Over. <sighs> he enjoying the all time. I can use it, mate. Any chance you help me with something? What? It's a bit of a lead. It's a woman called Catherine Dell. Yeah. How are you feeling? Right, I'm gonna need to take a statement from you. No. What? But this guy could have killed you. He didn't. Look, if you don't do something about this now, he's gonna do it again and again. Why don't you leave me alone? This is all because of the old Bill. Oh, well, this is our fault, is it? We should have left him to it, should we? That copper came round last night. Said he was looking for business. Lee saw me with him. And what copper are we talking about now? Reg, in it. You must know him. Greasy hair bloke. Miserable get he is. And Lee beat you up because you'd been with Reg? I didn't go with him. I told him where to go. Lee still beat me up. He thought I was grassing him up. And would you be willing to make a statement about this? No. I told you. All right, what time was this last night? Don't know. Ask Magda. He went with her. If Reg was with a Tom, then he's got an alibi, so why didn't he tell the MIT? Maybe it's not something he felt too proud about. What, he's embarrassed about having a bunk up with a Tom? So he gets charged with murder? Not even Reg is that stupid. Well, we won't know that until we find her. If we do. We're gonna have to. So, and what if Munro finds out we've been down here? Well, we tell him we're looking for witnesses on that Michelle Piper assault. He's not gonna press charges. In case she changes her mind. Let's have a look at that mugshot of Catherine Dell. That's her. Catherine or Cathy Dell. She was arrested for GBH and sentenced to four years in Holloway. Guess who was there at the same time? Anna Matthews. Give that man a cigar. <laughs> DC Glaze, Sunhill. Are you Catherine Dell? Oh. Excuse me. Do you know Rich? Of course I do. He's like you, he's been around for years. Did you see him last night? Yeah. As a punter? Sort of. He paid me, I listened to him. How do you mean? You get them like that. All they want to do is talk. That's what they say. I don't know what they do after. That's their business. Do you know what time this was? No idea. Well, roughly. It's important. This time? Later, maybe. Football was on the telly, all the punters are in the pub. How long were you with Rich? Felt like hours. I don't know. However long it was, it was worth 80 quid to him. Did you go to a hotel? No. We stood on the common. Very romantic and bloody freezing in this get-up. And you just talked? Yeah. He said he thought he had this great new job and he wanted to tell somebody about it. So I told him he was a clever boy, patted him on his head, sent him off happy. And you stayed on the common? No, we walked back to the cash machine. He didn't have no money on him. Thanks. You've been a great help.
Gov. Where did these come from? What's the point asking? You know already. Yes, I think we do. Let's go. Reg, I've got a statement from her. What do you want me to do? If you took money out of an ATM machine to pay her, then we can get the time from that. It's your alibi. How's it make me look? Innocent. Have I did it wrong all these years? Or aren't I supposed to be presumed innocent? Did you lie in the interview? No. Then there's not a problem. You didn't even give her one. I wonder that's all right, then. Do you want me to talk to DCI Munson or not? You might as well. Everyone's going to hear about it anyway. When did you meet Anna Matthews? I shared a cell with her. She was the only thing that kept me going while I was inside. Did she tell you about her mother? Doreen, you mean? Yeah. Anna was trying to find out about her. Why was that? Her other mother was a real cow. And I wasn't care by the time she was 15. She didn't have no one. Did you pretend that you were Anna? I looked after Anna all the time she was ill. Right up till she died. She never met her mum. The papers came through when she was too ill to read them. I don't know. I mean, we were like sisters. I just thought... Why not? So you went to see her. What happened? I told her I was Anna. Doreen wasn't to know, was she? Look, God's honest truth, all I wanted to do was find out what she was like. Did you try to get money from her? I needed money, yeah. Everything I had, I'd spent on looking after Anna. But it wasn't the money. And Doreen was her mother. What did she ever do for us? Duncan. Tony. Reg has got an alibi. Has this got to do with the football? What? The witness said he saw Reg in Wells Avenue at nine o'clock. Half time in the football. Now I should have checked. There was extra time. He actually saw him in half time and extra time. So it would have been around about 10 o'clock. This has got nothing to do with the football, has it? No. I've got a statement from a Tom. <laughs> You've lost me. She said she was with Reg at 8 o'clock, which gives him an alibi. Oh, wait, Tony. We've arrested a suspect. Catherine Dell. Oh, right. Maybe Reg should keep quiet about the Tom. <laughs> it might be a bit too late for that. Thanks, Duncan. No, thank you. Hey, I'm flavour of the month around here. <laughs> we have a security tape that shows you went to the Great Northern Building Society in Canley Road the day before yesterday. Why did you go there? I needed the money. Is that the money we found in your flat? Yeah. She said she wanted me to have money if I needed it, and then she called the old bill, didn't she? When was this? I went to her flat yesterday and there was this copper there. Did you go back to the flat yesterday evening? I still had her building society book. All I was going to do was put it back and get out of there and that was going to be the last time. What happened in the flat? She said she wasn't going to sell the flat. She started going on about, about this copper and about her husband and this and that. She started to say how no one came to see her. About this copper wouldn't come and see her once he'd got the flat. So I told her about Anna. About how no one wanted to know her, starting with her own mother. I told her that Anna didn't think coppers were so wonderful. How she thought they were scum. She started shouting at me. She picked up this poker. What did you do? I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I must have got hold of it. Did you hit her? Yes. I didn't mean to... How many times did you strike her? Once. I was so angry. 
She was just lying there on the floor. She was calling me Anna. She wanted me to forgive her for what she'd done. She wanted me to hold her hand. I couldn't do it. You heard they charged that woman then? Yeah. I don't know why Reg didn't tell him he's his own worst enemy. I asked Reg for you. I was going to say he's the stupidest bloke I've ever worked with, but then I remembered the geezer that's letting him keep in his flat. <clears throat> Can't argue with that. Listen, uh, about Reg and this Tom, I don't think there's any need for anybody else to know about it. I, mean, I don't think any of us come out of it looking too good in the end. No, they won't hear it from me. Cheers. There you go, Rich. Thanks, Tom. <sighs> you know, when we were kids, Muriel and I, we used to try and remember what our real mother looked like. I suppose we always thought she was there for us, somewhere. Don't work out like that, though, does it? Well, you don't want to hear all that. So what you got planned? Well, I look for another flat. Probably rent something to begin with. And work? Wouldn't mind getting my warrant card back. And it's off to royalty protection, is it? No, I think I'll knock that idea on the head. But I could always apply again. Yeah, we'll see. I'll tell you something. I would have got it, you know. They all but told me. Very impressive interview, all that. But you're stuck at Sunhill for the time being. Yeah, looks like it. Stay where you're wanted. Mm. I did begin to wonder that. You're like me, Rich. Part of the furniture. Yeah. I did hear a joke. What drug does a duck take? Go on. Quack. Cocaine. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> no, Rich. It's the way you tell them. <laughs> so, you help me get a bit of authority and respect back, and in return, I'll look out for you. Because, let's face it, you're not exactly flavour of the month yourself, are you?